Hi, I'm Professor Stephen Neshebet, and I'm here to help you out with calculating the temperature change that results in a Joule experiment. And uh, so, if you recall, the idea of the Joule experiment is that we have a, a gas that's compressed, and then it expands against a constant um, a zero external pressure, that is to say, against a vacuum. And uh, what that means is in the Joule, uh, tom uh, Joule experiment that um, there's no work done because the gas is expanding against a, uh, a vacuum. And uh, we're going to make it an adiabatic experiment, which means we don't let in any heat go in and out. Um, so, uh, so Q is zero, W is zero. That means from the first law, there's no change in the uh, internal energy. And, um, and, uh, and so, just to kind of orient you a little bit on, on this, I'm, I've, I've sketched here the internal energy as a function of our state space variables, temperature and volume. I've got volume going into the page, temperature uh, increasing to the right. And uh, you're familiar with this curve. Uh, for, a, for an ideal gas, it would just be flat in the uh, volume direction. But for a real gas, it, it, it dips down like this at low volumes. And, uh, what does it mean then to say that there's no change in the uh, in the uh, in the internal energy? Well, you can imagine as we're going from a low volume to a high volume. Let's suppose we started off right at this at this point. Well, in order to maintain uh, the uh, a constant uh, uh, internal energy U, obviously uh, one would have to sort of scoot off a little bit to the left in order to stay at the same at the same height, that is the same contour in U, that's also called an adiabat. And uh, what I've done is I've taken this, uh, these contours, this contour map here that's in state space and redrawn it for you so you can just, it's as if you're looking down now on this, and I've drawn, redrawn this contour. Uh, this is the starting temperature, this might be the finishing temperature, and uh, I've just drawn that adiabat. I've also drawn for reference in here these dashed lines, which is uh, what would appear if it were an ideal gas because um, there's no there's no temperature dependence of the uh, internal energy for an ideal gas. So the delta T that we're looking for in the um, in this experiment would be we start off at this temperature, we end up at that temperature. There's that delta T. That's what uh, that's what we're looking for. The way we're going to do that is to say, well, what if I just marched along? Imagine marching along here uh, in small increments, and uh, uh, there's a uh, there's a change in temperature, a little dt, and there's a change in volume, a little dv, every step of the way. And so um, we'll just take it from my initial volume, vi, to uh, vf, and, uh, and, and see how that plays out. Okay? Now, uh, we have a, a differential equation of state uh, that would have to happen along that adiabat, along, along this curve here. And it goes something like this. The change in U, which we think is zero, is going to be the change in temperature uh, times the heat capacity times the change in volume times the uh, pi sub t. And uh, in order for this to be uh, zero every step of the way, then obviously whatever change uh, happens here must be compensated for by the change there. But also given in the problem that the heat capacity is 3 halves R, that would uh, correspond to one mole of a, uh, of a monatomic gas. And we're told that um, uh, this is the formula for pi sub t, uh, that's the van der Waals parameter divided by uh, B minus B, the attractive versus uh, the, uh, the repulsive part. So what I've done here um, in, in the next step here, and what you'll, you'll want to do is to say, well, if that's zero, that means I could, uh, I could uh, say this is equal to the negative of that, so that's what we've got going on there. And uh, because we want the change in T, what I've done is I've divided both sides by CV, so we have DT is equal to that uh, expression there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to want to march along that whole time, you know, that whole path, uh, which means that I want to do an integral. Okay, so there's that integral. Now, of course, for the, uh, the, change, the total change in temperature, that would be some TI to TF. Okay, and uh, for the volume, that would be VI to VF. Okay, and um, so this term right here obviously will turn into a delta T, all right? And uh, this term right here, well, um, some things can come out of the integral. The minus sign obviously comes out of the integral because CV is a constant. That can come out of the integral. Uh, how about pi sub T? Well, the A can come out, but we still have left uh, in the denominator B minus B, the quantity squared. 
And uh, I'm going to leave that uh, uh, for you to finish. Uh, that's just a problem in, in, in calculus. And uh, when, once you solve that, then uh, you would substitute in the, the limits for the definite integral vi and vf. And you will have your uh, expression delta t in terms of vi and vf. Okay, good.